In the next few videos, I'm going to talk about Van Kampen's theorem, which is a really useful theorem for computing fundamental groups of topological spaces. In this video, I'll tell you what the theorem says and use it to compute some examples. And in later videos, we'll see some applications and finally the rather long and involved proof of the theorem. Van Kampen's theorem says that if you have a topological space X, which you can write as a union of two open subsets U and V, whose intersection is non-empty and path connected, then you can compute the fundamental group of X in terms of the fundamental groups of U and V by some purely algebraic procedure. More precisely, if we pick a base point little x in the intersection, then the fundamental group of x based at x is given by the amalgamated product of the fundamental group of u, uh, of u at x with the fundamental group of v at x, amalgamated over the subgroup coming from the fundamental group of the intersection. So I need to tell you what an amalgamated product is, uh, and then I'll do a bunch of examples. The amalgamated product is defined whenever you have the following purely algebraic data. You have two groups, A and B, which in our example are gonna be pi one U and pi one V. And you have a third group C together with homomorphisms from C to A and from C to B, which we're going to call F and G. And our, in our case, in Van Kampen's theorem, C is going to be the fundamental group of the intersection. And these holomorphisms are going to be the push forward maps under the inclusion from the intersection into U and from the intersection into V, right? Because the intersection is a subset of U and also a subset of V. So if I denotes the inclusion from U intersect V to U, this map here is going to be I star, the induced map on fundamental group. And if J is the inclusion into V, then this vertical map here is going to be J star. So whenever you have this kind of purely group theoretic data, you can define an amalgamated product. So if I have a, B, C, F, and G, I can define something which I'm going to write as A star B, and then I'm going to put a subscript C on the star. This is the amalgamated product. And this is going to be the following. It's a group, and I'm going to give you a presentation of the group. The generators are going to be the generators of A together with the generators of B. In other words, I'm implicitly picking some presentation of A and B together. So I get the generators of A and the generators of B and just write them in a big list. And that'll be the generators of the amalgamated product. And then for relations, I have the relations in A and I also have the relations in B. But I'm going to introduce a third set of relations which somehow involve the group C. And these are called the amalgamation relations. Well, I, I call them that. I don't know if anyone else does. What are the amalgamation relations? Well, for every element or generator of C, depending on which you prefer, you get a relation. So let me just write it like this. For all C and C, we get an amalgamated relation, which is F of C equals G of C. So what does this mean? Well, F of C is an element of A. And I have already in my presentation the generators of A and the relations in A so I can make sense of F of C as an element of this amalgamated product. Similarly G of C is some element in B and I have the generators of B and the relations in B so I can make sense of G of C 
as an element of this amalgamated product. And this amalgamation relation is saying those two are set to be the same element. So what does this mean geometrically in terms of the fundamental group? Where are these amalgamation relations coming from? Well, if you think about it, C is supposed to be the loops that are contained in both U and V. And this relation is just saying, if we consider a loop in that intersection as a loop living in U or a loop living in V, it doesn't matter, it's the same loop. That's what the amalgamation relation is getting at. So let's do some examples of amalgamated products coming from geometry, coming from topology. Let's do the example of the two-sphere. The two-sphere we can give as the union of two open sets, which are the northern hemisphere plus a little bit. That's a slightly extended northern hemisphere that comes just below the equator. Union the lower hemisphere, the southern hemisphere, again with a little bit that goes above the equator just to make them into open sets that overlap. The overlap is a neighbourhood of the equator which is this pink region here. So the red bit is U, the blue bit is V, and this is the intersection. Van Kampen's theorem tells us that pi1 of S2 is the amalgamated product of pi1 u with pi1 v amalgamated over pi1 of the intersection. So what are pi1 u, pi1 v and pi1 of the intersection? Well pi1 of u is trivial because u is topologically just a disk and V is also topologically just a disk, it's contractible, so they both have pi1 trivial. Pi1 of the intersection is non-trivial, right, because the intersection retracts down onto the circle, the equator. So U intersect V is homotopy equivalent to the circle. Um, let me just say that again. pi1 of u intersect v is the same as pi1 of the circle, which is z. And because I'm doing presentations of groups, generators and relations, I want to write down a presentation of the integers, so that's the cyclic group of infinite rank. So that's just got one generator, c, and no relations. Okay, so let's draw the diagram that you need for Van Kampen's theorem, we have pi1 of u intersect v, that's generated by one thing. We have pi1 of u, that's trivial. And we have pi1 of v, that's also trivial. So the amalgamated product has generators coming from the trivial group, which you may as well take to be empty set of generators, or you need no generators to generate a trivial group, and generators coming from this other trivial group, so we still have no generators, so we have no generators at all, and we get the trivial group back. You might say, oh, but pi1 of the intersection is non-trivial, well, that doesn't matter, that only enters into the relations. The relations in this case are telling us, you know, f of c, and this, this is the map f, going from the group generated by c to the trivial group, so f of c is automatically equal to 1, equals g of c, which is, again, equal to 1. So the, the only relation we get from this amalgamation process is 1 equals 1, which holds in any group, so that's, it's irrelevant that the intersection is not simply connected. So that tells us pi 1 of S2 is trivial. The sphere is simply connected. Let's do another example. Let's take 
the wedge of two circles. In other words, we have two circles joined together at a single point. So we can cover this with two open sets. One is this red guy, which is the left hand circle together with the little bit. And the other is this blue guy, which is the right hand circle together with a little bit. And they overlap in this middle region, which is just a cross. So red is U, blue is V. What's pi 1 u? It's the integers, because u is homotopy equivalent to a circle. What is pi 1 v? Again, it's the integers, because v is also homotopy equivalent to a circle. And what's pi 1 of the intersection? It's trivial, because the intersection is just this little contractible cross. So let's give this guy generator A and this guy generator B. The amalgamated product, that is pi 1 of the wedge of two circles, is generated by A and B. There are no relations coming from pi 1 of U. There are no relations coming from pi 1 of V. And actually, there are no amalgamated relations either, because the only element of of pi 1 of the intersect v is the identity element and that gives us f of the identity equals g of the identity which again because f and g are homomorphisms is just saying 1 equals 1 and that's true in any group we don't need that as a relation so there are no amalgamated relations no other relations so the group that we get is just generated by a and b with no relations this is called the free group on A and B, or the free group on two generators. What are the elements of this group? Well, they're things like A squared, B inverse, A to the 14, B, A, B squared, whatever. It's just some word written using A's, B's, A's inverses, B inverses. And the only simplifications you're allowed to do to these words are things like a a inverse equals the identity, or b b inverse equals the identity, or the other way around. In other words, this b inverse is not allowed to go past this a to the 14 and cancel with this b. There's just It's not a commutative abelian group. It's just a free group. That's what it means by having no relations. So this group is very, very large, right? Because you can write down any word in A's and B's and there's basically no simplification that can happen. And we'll be returning to this example and this group again and again and again uh, throughout the course, especially when we come to covering spaces. It'll be very illustrative. The last example I want to look at is the two torus, which you can either think of sitting inside Euclidean space in the usual way, or you can think of like we've seen as a square with opposite sides identified. And the way you go between those two pictures is that this edge with one arrow becomes a circle that goes, say, in the meridian direction around the torus, and the other circle with two arrows goes in the longitude direction. How am I going to apply Van Kampen's theorem? Well, I need to split the torus into two open subsets. I'm going to do that by just cutting out a disk. So the disk is going to be U. And everything else is going to be V. As usual, you need to make them slightly larger to make them open sets. And their intersection is going to be this circular region around U. Let's make that U a bit more obvious. Okay, so pi 1 of the torus is now an amalgamated product of pi 1 U and pi 1 V. Pi 1 U is trivial because U is a disk. 
pi 1 of v well I claim this is the free group on two generators a and b where so this one is a and this one is b why is that well if you look and at this picture and you just homotope outwards away from the center of the square you can see that it retracts deformation retracts onto this union of two curves a and b and if you look in this picture above that's just a wedge of two circles so v is a wedge of two circles and we just computed the fundamental group of the wedge of two circles is the free group on two generators the intersection u intersect v is this pink circle so its fundamental group is the integers which I'm going to write as having one generator C and then the maps F and G are in this case F is trivial and G is actually something really non-trivial so we'll compute this in a moment pi 1 of the torus is then given by well there are no generators from u there's two generators from v so we get two generators and there are no relations from u there are no relations from v but there is an amalgamated relation now saying whatever this g of c is it's trivial what's that what's that saying it's saying this pink loop you can consider it inside v where it's maybe something non-trivial but as soon as you homotop it down into u it bounds this disk and it can just be contracted to a point so what is gfc well if you look at the picture you can see this pink loop if you push it out to the boundary like i suggested will go once around a and then continue around b then it'll go backwards around a and then it'll go backwards down b so in other words g of c is a b a inverse b inverse all right so just labeling the diagram now so if you go a and then b then backwards along a that's a inverse backwards along b that's b inverse so the amalgamated relation we get is b inverse a inverse b a equals the identity and we can rewrite this in a slightly more familiar form if we multiply out by these inverses so take b onto this side and a onto this side that's the same as saying uh, b a equals a b So this is an abelian group a and b commute with one another unlike in the previous case so i hope this example is starting to illustrate just how powerful this idea of amalgamated relations is it's allowing you to see a loop in two different halves of your space and that's giving you new relations in the group and so this is the first really non-trivial example we've done in the next video, I will give you some further applications of Van Kampen's theorem for computing basically fundamental groups of any cell complex. And then in the subsequent video, I will give you a proof of Van Kampen's theorem.